Welcome everyone. Uh, so uh, my name is Zhong Yang. I think everybody know me. So astrophotography is my uh, major hobby. So today I'm going to in introduce you to this uh, field to let you know the amazing of uh, the God's creation. Uh, so so the first picture showing here is actually is not I found online. So I took the, by this uh, telescope. It's called the Rosetta Nebula. And um, I will tell you those uh, things more detail later. So let's uh, back to brief some history. So I assume most of everybody are Christian, right? So do you guys not notice uh, familiar with this map? So we always uh, learn this from a Bible study uh, class on Wednesday, right? Like uh, this uh, Middle East area, like uh, Iraq, Syria, Israel. So in, in ancient time, this area called uh, Mes uh, Mesopotamia civilization. So there's uh, like a different group of people, the ancient uh, Jewish, uh, as uh, I don't know how to say that, Assyrian or Babylonian, you know, something like that. So yeah, Yashuren, yes. So uh, Assyrian Babylonian. Yeah, Assyrian. Assyrian Babylonian. Yeah. So. Uh, uh, so there's they have uh, they have a, like uh, like an astronomy record uh, you can back into the prehistory time you know, like uh, 8000 BC to the finally they got conquered by the other empire like Roman or Arabic to the 780. But the uh, first uh, documented the systematic uh, astronomical observation record is uh, founded by uh, like. Uh, like uh, 1000 BC uh, before the Christ, and uh, they also have uh, their yeah, and uh, they also have their uh, calendar system that's uh, based on the lunar. It's a uh, 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 and uh, they also found um, uh, uh, like uh, uh, twelve like uh, constellations, like uh, you know like. Uh, Today, a lot of Chinese they don't believe in God. They uh, have a, like a believe in zodiac, right? Zodiac. Actually, they are the most uh, earliest uh, zodiac is from there. Yeah. So that. Yeah. So. So. So the zodiac is twelve constellations. Is uh, like uh, uh, the uh, because the Earth is rotating to the sun and then it's projecting on the sphere of the whole year's uh, uh, sun's locations. So, the, uh, so each month the suns will stop uh, by, by certain constellation. That's why you have uh, 12 months in the 12 constellations. And uh, that, uh, that circuit, uh, um, uh, that orbit is called, uh, uh, I don't know how to say this. <laughs> Ephelic, yeah. The, the similar time period, uh, ancient Egypt also have uh, their uh, uh, like uh, observation of the uh, of the uh, uh, astronomy. So uh, they they even have earlier the records, like uh, four thousand BC years ago. They already the people already found their records, and they are. Uh, um, they, in their calendar, they already know that one year is how was 365 days, uh, and uh, um, they are very interested in to the one star is called the Cyrus. It's a, it's a very bright one because every time when it's a, a Cyrus a rising in the early morning, it means uh, the Nile uh, River will flooding. And they, uh, that is uh, very significant to their agriculture because uh, when the Nile River is flooding, it's uh, bring a lot of uh, nutrition to the to the ground, and uh, then that's a very is a fertilized land and uh, to uh, give them a better harvest for for the agricultural reason. So they have uh, were very interested in to uh, observe the Cyrus, and um, they also found it like. Uh, uh, the uh, obliquity of the ecliptic, Huang Shi Jiao Jiao. So you know, like, uh, so this is the equator of the Earth, and this is uh, the projecting the motion of the Earth orbiting the Sun, right? There's uh, some angle between. Do you guys remember what the that angle it is? It's a high school ge ge uh, 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 geography. Do you remember what this angle it is? Golden Golden Gate. <laughs> 23 degree 
in the twenty uh, uh, twenty six second. So it's uh, this angle. So basically, the uh, the equator is uh, the Earth uh, uh, like rotating itself. There is an axle there, and also uh, this one is uh, the uh, is 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 the uh, space uh, is the plant of the Earth. Uh, uh, orbiting the sun, so that that's why you have this angle there. They already noticed that they have an angle there, and they also knowing there is a, something called a axle precision. The axle precision is like a, you know like a, uh, um, you know like a, if you know some uh, Greek uh, zodiac, it's like saying okay, I'm born in like uh, March. I'm a, a uh, a racist, uh, yeah. And uh, if I'm uh, born in December, I'm a uh, Sagittarius. So why is it depends on that's the time? Is it because uh, like uh, so? Uh, now it's is is already changed because uh, like uh, uh, the crossing point between these uh, two things is uh, each year we are going to the western. So it's uh, uh, so the season is not a, a sticking with uh, like. Uh, Spring starting from the uh, March anymore. It's starting from the April, you know, Chun Fen Dian, you know. Yeah, so because the Earth is like, uh, uh, how do you say that? Uh, gyroscope, you know, like a Tolo. Yeah, so it's, uh, when it's orbiting, and then it's, it's, uh, it's, also, it's also have a, uh, the, the axle is also have some motions. This is causing, uh, switch out axle precision. Okay, so uh, Asian China, we also have a great achievement for uh, ast astronomy observations. So we, are, we have the longest continuous record uh, of astronomy records in the history because uh, we are Chinese, they like to record the history. And um, so the earliest uh, record is uh, came back to the Shang Dynasty. And uh, uh, so we have our own constellation. It's, uh, it's called uh, 28 uh, mansions, 28星宿. Uh, if, uh, if you heard about the uh, Ziweiyuan, like uh, Tai Weiyuan, those things, Gui Xiu, Niu Xiu, Dou Xiu, if you heard about that. So we have our own system of the constellations. The Greek, no, now, now we are like uh, what we um, familiar is like uh, this is a Greek, Greek constellations. I will uh, uh, talk about that maybe a little bit later. But we have our own things and also we have uh, four different uh, animals to represent uh, the direction. Qing Long Bai Hu, Zhu Che Xiao Wu. Uh, so we in our Asian record, we already have uh, observed uh, comets, and uh, we we classify have different uh, comets, and uh, we have uh, in our historical books, a thousand years ago, we already recorded like uh, w like when and where those uh, uh, comets happens, and we also have uh, some uh, supernova records. We 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 have very precise uh, those records. So and our ancestor also invent invent some um, uh, astronomical instrument. Very interesting. It's a it's a hydraulic powered uh, uh, instrument. Like uh, it's using the river, uh, using the hydraulic power to push in those mechanism and making uh, uh, like this device simulates the Earth's rotation and the the, the, the sun or the uh, stars rising and fall. It's all powered by the water, and uh, and this is uh, astronomical observation from the Yuan Dynasty. is uh, in the uh, uh, Henan Dongfeng, and this one is in Beijing. is a, a, ob a observatory uh, uh, close to the Forbidden City, and a lot of those things is uh, built during the. Uh, <coughs> Uh, Qing and the Ming dynasties because of like uh, the missionary uh, uh, I don't know the English Li Ma Do or Rishin Ma Tia. Rishin Ma Tia. yeah they, they helping the uh, to uh, uh, Qing dynasty build those things because uh, 
Um, actually, we are we are celebrate the Lunar New Year two uh, two months ago, right? That's a Lunar calendar. is also is actually it's not made by Chinese. We have our own calendar, but since our limit by our uh, way to observations, it's not very accurate. And then uh, the uh, the Michi missionary, Martin. yeah, Richie Martin, Richie Martin, yeah. He's the missionary from Italy, and uh, there's a lot of uh, missionary coming to China at that time. They bring the uh, the Western uh, method to observe the stars and to making the more accurate calendar. So I don't know why P uh, our president don't like to celebrate a Christmas, but actually we're all using the Western uh, things. <laughs> yeah, so. Islamic civilization, they also have a great achievement for observation uh, of uh, astronomy. But uh, what they, uh, their knowledge from actually is from Greek astronomy. They heritage from that because at that time in the Europe is a is a medieval time. It's a people call it a dark age of science. So, but they have they have a greater translation movement to bring those uh, early Greek uh, knowledge. To, uh, to the Islamic world. And they improved the method to doing the observations. And also they are also uh, improved uh, some theories called the uh, uh, Ptolemaic model. So let's back to the Western civilizations about uh, astronomy. I mean, uh, this is very important because uh, the, we have uh, uh, all different type of uh, civilizations have an uh, astronomy records, but uh, the Western civilization is the only one I can say is uh, to make it to be uh, systematic, uh, to making the theory and the observation method. It's, uh, it's all for, start from the Western civilization. Because all, everything we, we're using here is uh, invented by the Western civilizations. So you back to the ancient Greek and the Rome, um, they they have a lot of philosopher and scientists at that time. It's like a, 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 I don't know how to say that. Ptolemaic <coughs> astronomy, <coughs> 就是亚里士多德托勒密, uh, they they made a like a which means is they thinking the Earth is the center of the universe, and. Um, and back to the Greek, they already know the Earth is a sphere, it's not a flat by the, uh, I don't know how to say that, Pythagoras. They already can measure the diameter of the Earth by you different location using the same, uh, same, same length of a stick and you know the baseline between each other and then finally you can know the radius of the Earth and, uh, um, and the diameter of the Earth. And uh, yeah, but but actually the uh, halocentrism, is not uh, from Gobaini or Bulu No. It's uh, at that time they already they already have some scholar notice that the um, is uh, is Earth rotating to the sun, and they he like uh, he this guy even calculated the ratio between the uh, distance between the earth and the sun they already have a clear explanation but it's just not a popular at that time and um, the roman empire made uh, the roman calendar is well what we are using today like the bc ad this system and um, and also they bring the uh, Euclidean geometry. That's uh, uh, is also inspired by the astronomy and also helping the uh, develop of uh, as uh, astronomy. Well, so uh, medieval time is medieval time of uh, observation in the uh, uh, in the Europe is uh, not very interesting. So they, they not have much improvement, but as I said, they have 1,000 years uh, since, uh, they not to doing, uh, encouraging to doing the uh, research. So, um, so they, keep, uh, they keep using the polymatic uh, astronomy, uh, which thinking the, the Earth is the center of the universe. And uh, but I mean, well, that time, uh, uh, there's some. Uh, they still have some heritage of astrology and uh, alchemist. It's not for research, 
reason is, but it's for like a predict the future. You know, they still have some heritage there, that. but it's not means that at that time the scholar uh, not thinking or, uh, uh, or or observing that time. They still have some uh, uh, some works doing, but it's just not a not a very systematic, not very significant in this one thousand year. Like I said before, in that time period, Islamic world is heritage and keep uh, developing uh, the observation method and uh, instruments from uh, the ancient Greek and the Roman. Until uh, the resonance age. Uh, do you know those guys? Bruno. Yeah. Galileo. Uh, yeah. There is no Bruno. I, I forgot to add that there. But uh, this fourth uh, guy is uh, uh, actually is leading for uh, for the new period of uh, astronomy observation. Actually, it's more about the freedom of speech. <coughs> uh, um, uh, Gobaini, how to say his name? Copernicus. 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 Yeah, Copernicus. Uh, he is uh, just uh, uh, he a believer is uh, the Earth is uh, rotate, orbiting the sun, and uh, this guy, uh, Di Wu, I don't know the English, uh, Tai Chou, there's, there's a lot of names of Italian or Germany, you know, I don't, I don't know how, how to say it, you know, in their, their language. So, so he, this person, Di Wu, is a, uh, uh, give the very accurate observations of the uh, like the stars and the planets, uh, where they're located, they have years of accumulated the data. And uh, he found, uh, he found what? He found like the Mars is a different, uh, the location of the Mars is different than the uh, Earth-centric series prediction. Like you, you assuming like next year, where's the Mars should have located, but there's some difference by your observation that with that theory. And that's why inspired this guy, Kepler, Kepler to, to thinking, maybe it's not a, a sun, uh, it's not a, like a Earth is the center, maybe sun is the center and the orbit of the Earth is a eclipse, uh, it's a eclipsoid, it's a, it's a, it's a And then he summarized the Kepler's law, like uh, first law is a, uh, Planet have a elliptical, uh, elliptical uh, orbit, and also um, the same time period, uh, uh, the area of the uh, planet travel is the same, and uh, also they found the mathematic uh, relation of it, <coughs> and that is inspired later Newton's works, and uh, Galileo is the first one using. Uh, um, telescope to observe the uh, night sky, and he have a very good uh, record. He found the ring of the uh, Neptune, and uh, <coughs> uh, the black spot on the sun. Then, uh, so the so the, the the modern day astronomy is the start from Galileo. <coughs> okay, so um, then. Since uh, the Galileo started using the uh, telescope to observe the uh, stars, and uh, and then those great those great works from Kepler uh, inspired Newton's to summarize uh, Newton's laws, and uh, also Newton is a very great uh, inventor. He invented the telescope called the Newtonian uh, telescope, which this telescope is Newtonian. I will uh, tell you this since later. And also, the Newton is the first one to uh, find the spectrum of the light. Like he using the prismids there and uh, to um, scatter the light to find have uh, the, uh, the the white light have different colors. And uh, we still using this method today, like for all different kind of research, and especially for the astronomy. You cannot go into those stars, but through those spectrum you can know what's, uh, what's happening there. And then also to making this uh, uh, telescope, he found a, a, new, a method called a Newton ring. It's like, a, a, like a, this, this, this is the lenses, and you're shooting the light there, and through this interference, finally you, you, there is a 
nuclear ring patterns there. If you learned uh, college level physics, this uh, you you should have supposed to be familiar with this kind of thing. Yeah. So basically, Newton is a bring the uh, modern uh, technique to uh, analyze and observe the um, stars. Okay. So now it is a modern day uh, astronomy. So. We already be a full spectrum of astronomy. So, if you see the spectrum of uh, the light, the visible light, only a very narrow band. The most of band is uh, it is not visible. Some part is a gamma ray, uh, X ray, or ultraviolet, and the to to uh, the other side is uh, infrared or even radio wave. So it's all considered as light. So our what we can see or using those uh, telescope. You normally it's just only visible light, so you can feel that uh, humans um, sense of the universe is very limited. But we developed later we developed a different method. We have uh, like a um, Hubble Space Telescope. We have uh, uh, like a Swift uh, Telescope so to sensing the ultraviolet. And also we have uh, um, some satellite to observe the X-ray astronomy. Or gamma ray astronomy, you know, the different. Why does a different wavelength is important because uh, there's a represent different physical uh, physics uh, process behind, you know. <clears throat> so this is like the same nebula is from different spectrum you can uh, see. So this is a, a nebula uh, from the supernova, and uh, you can see from radio, from infrared, from visible light, ultraviolet, X-ray, gamma ray. So all have represent the energy distributions and the different uh, uh, process of the uh, physics. And the, this, this diagram is showing you the, it, this is the Milky Way and the, the, in different uh, spectrum where, where, by different way to observing it. Okay, uh, so let's talk about a telescope. Uh, so those are pictures of what I took uh, from different uh, places. Um, so basically, uh, on the ground, you normally can see two type of uh, basically two type of uh, telescope. One is uh, like is a uh, optical telescope. The other is a radio wave. This is a VLA in New Mexico, and this is a uh, in Flagstaff. It's an older refractor uh, telescope. So these are two type of uh, telescope. But it's um, on the ground we normally can see because. Uh, no matter infrared or X-ray or gamma ray, you have to put a satellite in the orbit. And uh, because of the, our atmosphere of the Earth can absorb those lights, you cannot uh, absorb them. You have to put on the orbit. On the ground, you normally can to, to see these two type of uh, observatory. So let's talk about uh, optical telescope uh, types. So normally for, uh, for no matter hobby or for research, uh, for the uh, optical uh, telescopes, we have a basic three type of uh, telescope. One is uh, like a, when the Galileo is using, it's a, it's a refract, uh, refractor system. Basically, you have an objective lens here and also eyepiece here. It's a, it, it, the, the light coming through here and then focal to here and then project to your eyepiece. The other one is what I'm showing here is a Newtonian reflector is the light coming in there is a, a period of, a mirror here and this mirror is a focus, focusing on the on the uh, reflection mirror and then to your eyepiece that's why from this telescope you you see him from here you're not seeing from here you know mm. yeah normally your 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 your, um, your camera is a ref, uh, refractor most of uh, your camera lens is a refractor yeah and there's another design to co-reacting the aberrations. Is uh, this one example is called a Schmidt Cassegrain telescope. So a lot of people ask me when I if I want to buy a telescope, what I should uh, looking for. They ask you. They normally ask me uh, how 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 magni uh, how big is it can magnify. You know? So but if you buy a telescope, normally you don't ask that questions. So there is a four parameters, a major parameter is uh, very important. First is aperture. It's the diameter of the telescope. 
and the second is a focal lens and the f number this is like your your your, your camera lenses the f value this f value is calculated by the focal lens divided by your diameter for the normally uh, telescope is f4 f7 f15 in the f4 you have a shorter, uh, you have a faster exposure time, and uh, it's also normally is good to uh, capture the picture of nebulas. And the F15 is normally is good for like uh, zoom in to see some uh, planet, and uh, F7 is in the middle. My telescope is F4. It's a, uh, it's a, it's good for a, a deep sky object of uh, like nebulas. But uh, if you want to zoom in for a planet like Saturn, like uh, Mars, like uh, Jupiter, this cannot magnify too much. And uh, also, there's one the other parameter for the limits uh, magnitudes. This means uh, uh, it's a logarithm relation. It means uh, uh, how uh, like uh, is is uh, how much light it can cl uh, collect of the uh, telescope relative to your eye. So you can see the D zero is uh, your pupil uh, diameter, and uh, and D one is uh, the diameter of the uh, your telescope. And the other parameter called uh, angular resolution. So 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 since this optical system, there's one thing it's called a really uh, criterion. It's uh, calculated by this way. It's decided by the lambda. It's a wavelength and the your diameter of the telescope, which means you have a larger the diameter. If you will fix the uh, uh, lambda, the wavelength, you have larger the diameter. You have better the angular resolution. The angular resolution is if you have uh, like um, two stars, they are very close to each other. Whether you, uh, your, your telescope is uh, resolute enough to distinguish they are two stars, not one star. And, uh, and this one is showing you the, uh, uh, the magnitude of uh, stars. You know, like uh, when you see the uh, sky chart, you will see like they have a different uh, dots. That's represent how bright, bright, the brightness of the star, you know. And this part, uh, yeah, and this is showing you the aperture is the diameter of the uh, objective lens. And this, like, your when you're doing your camera, you normally should be familiar with this as the f value with your apertures, and how it's uh, related to your depths of your uh, uh, vision. Like, um, if you wanna you blur your background, you better using larger uh, aperture. If you wanna. Uh, Everything so clear, then you need a, a, a smaller aperture. Okay, let's uh, talk about a uh, spectrum type. type. So, uh, I already said uh, to, today's astronomy is a full spectrum uh, astronomy. The, uh, the visible light actually is have a three ty different type of a spectrum. It's continuous spectrum, emission spectrum, and the absorption spectrum. That's a represent different uh, uh, physics process behind. So um, the continuous spectrum is ideal. It never exists in the uh, real physical system because uh, it, it, that's called the uh, ideal black body. Like uh, the black body is like uh, if, if you're thinking something really hot and it's uh, emitting all spectrum of the light. That's that's uh, that's a will generate the continuous spectrum. Emission spectrum is like um, when you learn uh, chemistry in high school, like uh, like uh, you have sodium, you burn a sodium. Sodium is generate uh, bl a bright uh, yellow color light, right? And uh, or, or, or um, um, so and uh, so if some gas emitting light, that's uh, emission spectrum. And the absorption uh, spectrum is also is by the gas. Like if for some light through certain uh, certain gas, is some part, some energy of the uh, spectrum uh, of the light will be absorbed. That will uh, generate some uh, uh, black line there. It means that those uh, uh, those uh, spectrum of light got absorbed by that gas, and it doesn't let you know what's the things in the middle between you and the stars and something in the middle. It's some gas absorb that. And here's an example of the 
uh, spectrum of uh, some nebula. You know, the nebula normally is a uh, emission uh, spectrum. It's uh, you have some peaks. Normally, like uh, if uh, normally it's from it's like uh, the hydrogen spectrum, and also some spectrum if from supernova, you will see the. Uh, 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 emission uh, spectrum from the oxygen, carbon, something like that. And this is our sun's spectrum. It's already close to the continuous spectrum. It's kind of continuous, but you can, you can see some uh, black one there. That means there's some gas there is uh, observing the light. And you can know what's the element of it. Okay, um, so let's talk about uh, sensors. Like uh, everyone bought a camera, and uh, your camera have uh, image sensors. So normally for a commercial uh, camera, you are using a uh, CMOS sensor. And but for astronomy observation, we normally using CCD camera. The difference is uh, that each pixels of the CCD is a um, uh, they don't have a ADC there, it's an analog to digital converter. The, the design actually simpler, but it can make the pixel larger. And it has a higher uh, uh, quantum efficiency. And the CMOS is how each, each pixel has a very um, complex design inside. It's a lower uh, quantum uh, efficiency. And uh, so when you buy a camera, you normally to need to know how, how big is your sensor. So there's some standard, like uh, you, if you're using a full frame uh, sensor, there's, there's this is the standard of the full frame. The older is one, as, as, uh, Apex uh, is, is a, the sensor smaller. The sensor smaller is also narrow the range what you can uh, observe by the picture. I, have pic uh, I will show you later. And the other parameter for the sensor is uh, how many it, about a bit, like uh, because you have ADC converters, so you have one bit to ten bits. You can see it represents the uh, grayscale how continuous it, it is. Like if you have a larger the ADC converter, then you can have a, uh, um, then you need a, a, a larger bits to to convert the uh, the, the, the light the grayscale. Yeah, and then this uh, this uh, diagram is showing you like a uh, uh, like a normally camera we are using is a color uh, camera. You, each pixel is uh, have a sensor behind and uh, it's have uh, already built in filter. But for astronomy picture, we normally buy a monochrome camera and using different uh, different filter to take a picture and then synthesis uh, to one picture. Normally, like uh, you want to uh, take uh, astronomical uh, pictures, those deep sky objects is very, uh, very dark, dark. So you need a long time exposures. So uh, this is called uh, integration time. So uh, that's uh, affecting like uh, how much light you can collecting, right? Like you exposure uh, longer the time, you can uh, uh, you can uh, collecting more uh, photons. And those photons travel uh, maybe millions of years to your eye or to the sensor to your, of your camera. And that's why it needs a long time exposure. And uh, they, like, uh, <coughs> this is showing you like, uh, when you uh, exposure longer the, uh, time, then you can see uh, more detail of the object you want to observe. And also, Sometimes, like if you have a, a like a light pollution or something, you can you cannot exposure too long time. Or plus, uh, for astronomical CCD, you normally you need to uh, to cool it down. But for normal camera, you don't have that mechanism because uh, the cooler the system, the less the the the, the less the noise. <coughs> So normally you are exposure several pictures and finally synthesis to be one picture because uh, like if you have all the TV you may be seeing like uh, like uh, on the screen if you know any channel this is a white noise yeah 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 so 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 from a statistical way to see it is 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 we are oscillate randomly you know. You got a more you you you, you got a more uh, uh, picture and you overlap them together. You can cancel out because 
This, uh, those pictures have information, you cannot cancel out those information, but uh, the noise will cancel out because it's all oscillating between the zero. Okay, let's go next. Uh, so this is uh, telling you different, uh, if you want the same uh, brightness, uh, by, uh, but it's have different uh, ISO parameters, what it can do, you know. So basically you can see, if you have a smaller eye, uh, like uh, you want to make it the same brightness, but for, for different ISO, you smaller the ISO value, you need a longer the exposure time. The longer exposure time, since you're not tracking, you can see the stars is already become to a line. And here is how a higher the uh, uh, ISO, then it will be uh, there. Uh, this exposure time will be faster, but the problem is you will see more noise. So you need some trade off between what's the parameter, what's the ISO, what's the aperture value you are using. So this is affecting everything. <laughs> so you can see more clearly from this one, like a different ISO, how it's affecting the quality of the image. Like you, you have a, uh, this uh, have most the highest ISO, this is the lowest ISO, and you have more. Uh, you have you have you, you have more like uh, uh, how to say that noise, you know. So yeah, so yeah. So normally, I, when I uh, capture the image, I normally using 1,000 or 2,000. I never using that big. But it's, uh, this will just clear to show you the ISO value how it's uh, affecting your quality of image. So this is uh, uh, like showing you the sensor size, how it's uh, like uh, if affecting your the view uh, of your uh, picture. Like this is the Milky Way, and this is your full frame, uh, and this is like uh, Hasu is a uh, Zhonghua yeah. 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 yeah, medium format and a different different sensor size is a. Uh, you, what, what you can see from the sky is not just decided by the lens. Your lens have a wide angle, right? But if your sensor is too small, you, you still, you, you like a cutting the part of the image from, from the, even you have wider angle of the lenses, you know? So that's why you have larger the sensor, the better. And this is showing you the narrow band filter. So we are living in city, there's a lot of, uh, 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 light pollution, you know, the normally the light we are uh, using for our city uh, uh, is, a, is, a, is a, normally it's a sodium and uh, uh, mercury. And uh, so this is uh, showing you like, uh, uh, it, uh, yeah, this is a, uh, now yeah, this is, this is a showing you filter out the, uh, using the filter to filter out the um, uh, the light pollution, you know. And there's also have other type of a filter. It's like this one is a uh, narrow band filter. It's a H alpha filter, and this also using uh, hydrogen H alpha filter. And uh, since uh, H alpha is a, is, a, is a narrow band of the hydrogen's uh, emission spectrum, you filter out that. You uh, since a lot of uh, uh, nebula is uh, only uh, emitting the light in uh, uh, most of the chemical compound of those uh, uh, of those nebula is a hydrogen, and it's uh, emitting the hydrogen light. You filter out that, you can see more detail and ignoring other noise. Okay. Let's talk about how to do focusing of your camera or ca or, or, or your telescope. Uh, so normally, if you are using the uh, your normal lenses to taking the picture of the stars, uh, you you just ma you put your uh, lenses in the uh, manual mode, and then put it to the infinite uh, mode of your lenses. Then it will. Yeah, and then you can you is a pro, can projecting the infinite object to your uh, lenses by the right focus. But if you want to uh, focus better, there's a something called uh, I don't know this a uh, uh, Russian name, Bakhmov mask. Is this is this this type of thing? Yeah, normally I, uh, you can put it into your uh, in front of your camera or or, or telescope. And then you will see, this will generate interference pattern. 
making those uh, spikes of the uh, of the stars. And when there's a middle line in the uh, in, in the center of the star, then it means you are perfectly focused. This can give you the fine tuning for your focus. You can buy this kind of uh, device online. Okay, let's talk about another thing that can affecting the quality of your image. It's uh, called uh, aberrations. So uh, there's a lot of different aberrations, but here I'm uh, just uh, talking about the four major aberrations. The first aberration is uh, chromatic aberrations. Like uh, you have uh, optical lenses for different uh, wavelengths, they will they have different uh, focal distance. And uh, then that when when you take a picture, you will see on the edge, on the edge of your object, it will become too colorful. You don't want that. This is called a chromatic aberration. The other aberration is called a coma uh, or spherical uh, aberration. Normally, if you have a wide angle, uh, if you have a wide angle lenses, your center may be already focused. You see is very clear, but uh, you see on the edge of the, your picture is uh, looks uh, not very clear. Is it because of those aberrations? Some camera, all they uh, uh, they you introduce the uh, distortion to cancel the coma or spherical aberrations, and the, but when you introduce this on the edge, the detail is still clear, but it's just about distorted. Okay, let's talk about uh, astronomical coordinate system. <coughs> Um, like what I said before, like uh, also she asked the question, like if you long time exposure, the star will move in. Yeah, the star, because our Earth is rotating, uh, so it's a, uh, um, so our Earth, when it's rotating, it's a, uh, there have an axle, it's a pointing to the north, north, north star, right? So here is the picture I, I took, that, like you, you here is the North Star, like I exposed her like a four or four minutes, and then you can see it's like they are orbiting to the center of the North North Star. You can actually I'm not finished this one. You can expose a couple of them and to merge to be one circle. You know, some you can do that. You know, and um, for crying this system, we normally have uh, two system. One is called a. Uh, 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 equatorial system and the other called the horizontal system. This is a horizontal, like a, like this one. It's a it's a horizontal. Like you have a peach angle and the yaw, uh, and the yaw angle, and to to notice the the, the place of uh, an object. The other one is like this one. It's equatorial. This X will uh, align to the north stars, which means it's parallel to the uh, the X of the of the of the Earth. And then this uh, have motor there is can track keep uh, tracking the motion of the star. So the uh, the star motion on the in the sky is a uh, one degree is a uh, four minutes, and uh, uh, 50, uh, one one hour is about moving fifteen degree. Yeah, that's uh, the speed of angular velocity of uh, Earth's rotation. Okay, well, let's uh, say uh, talk about uh, tracking accuracy. So, like uh, I'm sad, like uh, the precision of this uh, tracker uh, is uh, de decided by the mechanical precision. Also, how you aligning this to the nor north star that's also affecting the tracking. So, like uh, for this picture, is showing you if you not uh, align this X very well. When you long time exposure, it's still well making some lines for the star. You know? and, but if your tracking system is not very accurate, you can see the star is not a dot anymore. It's become to a shaking line. And also this could, also could be like, why it's very heavy? Because if, you, if I'm walking, it's shaking, it's also well distort your picture. Yeah. So the tracking mount, it's much more important, sometimes it's much more important than the camera or the, or the lenses because that's directly affecting uh, how long you can exposure. Okay, image processing, I just briefly talk about it. There's also a lot of techniques. So normally, uh, since the uh, nebula is very dark, 
you pa the picture you took is not a looks very interesting. You only can see some little bit of detail there. But actually, since it's a dark, is uh, even your long time exposure, you still cannot see very clear. But all the information is already there. You need to tune in different channel to uh, to, to 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 amplify the pictures uh, to making them more clear. Since like this nebula is a. Uh, uh, it's a most is reddish, so when you're tuning the exposure by the Photoshop or something, you can specific tuning that's a ch uh, that's a channel to to amplify. You know. And uh, also like I before, you maybe have different spectrum to synthesis those pictures. There's a lot of techniques there. There's a uh, that's maybe high level. <laughs> <laughs> So here, now let's kind of relax. This is some picture I took before uh, by my telescope. Uh, yeah. So you can save some of your brain cell now. And uh, like this one is a Rosetta Nebula, and this uh, Andromeda the Galaxy is a uh, most uh, close uh, galaxy, uh, naked eye can visible galaxy actually. Using your normal camera, you you exposure it, you can you, you already can see it. But just maybe you cannot see that detail like my telescope, but actually it's not very hard to get it. So now this, let's talk about some events I took. Like this is a uh, uh, solar eclipse. This is from 2017, uh, uh, like Hopkins Hopkinsville is in uh, in Kentucky, and this I took the last year is. Uh, uh, from uh, uh, New Mexico, it's a it's a ring of fire. So uh, you you can when you took those picture, you can like uh, every four minutes take one picture, and finally you can stack together to uh, to synthesize mm -hmm. one picture, or you can make a video even if you want. So this is like some night sky I took. Like uh, this is a Milky Way, but this is uh, some city is a light actually. It's a light pollution. You know? It's when I'm in uh, maybe Cancun or somewhere, you know, the, the, the moon rising up from the sea, from the sea, and uh, and uh, some, with uh, some uh, some trees, and this is uh, like this is uh, I took some uh, pictures when there's a season of the uh, uh, fireflies. You can see those are fireflies there. Yeah, and also you can combine with the people. You know, I, I don't know why. It's a, <laughs> Why, why, why is uh, different uh, showing on my computer than here? You know, like I took uh, for my friends or something. Like there's a Milky Way, we are observing things there. Wow, Myself good. there, you know, there's uh, Orion, you know. Yeah. And there's my friends, there are a couple there and uh, yeah, something like that. Yeah, and this are uh, like, I also took for friends. Like you can combine them with the uh, stars. And this is just myself. Better have a girl there, you know. Like, <laughs> the flowers and there's uh, like uh, fireflies and the stars, you know. It's a good combination. Yeah.